Hi and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Twitter header in GIMP and this is a pretty simple tutorial. It should only take you a couple minutes. I'm not going to get too complicated with it so here we go. So the first thing you want to do is create the right size file and to do that you're just going to go to File New and you're going to make sure that the width and height are 1500 by 500 pixels. You can set the uh, you can set the unit here, so I'm going to set it to pixel, click OK. So by default you get this white background here. Uh, I'm going to change that color a little bit later. But the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, import my logo, which you saw in the original, this one right here. And to do that, I've already opened it right here in GIMP, but all I did was went to File Open, and I found the image file that I wanted to use. And uh, this image has no background because it's a .png file. So just make sure that you create your uh, logos or whatever as PNG files with no background. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit Copy Visible, or just edit Copy if it's only one layer, like this one. And I'm going to come in here and go to Edit Paste and that'll paste it in your document here and you can come over to your layers, channels, paths, undo uh, dialog box over here click on that floating selection layer that was just created and then click create a new layer and uh, now you got your logo here come over to your toolbar grab the move tool and go ahead and click your logo and drag it up a little bit just so it's a little more centered doesn't really have to be perfect unless you want it to be. So once I've done that, I'm going to change this background layer. Uh, right now it's just a plain white color, but what I want it to be is a gradient. So I'm going to come over here to my gradient tool or my blend tool. Click it. I'm going to click the first color, which is my foreground color. I'm going to come over here to my HTML notation, and I already know personally what color I want. If you don't know, you can come over here and play with the tools and uh, each color generates its own HTML code so I already know the code of what I want so I'm going to go ahead and type that in and hit OK and now I've got this light blue uh, relatively light blue and then I'm going to go ahead and click the uh, square below it which is the background color it says it right here And I'm going to go ahead and change the HTML to the code I already have. And again, you can just play around with these colors here to get the color you want. And so now you see up here I have two colors. I have my uh, foreground color and my background color. And uh, now, um, if you come over here to gradient, right now I have it set to um, foreground to transparent. That means the gradient is going to start with your foreground color and it's going to fade into a transparency. But I don't want that for this particular thing, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to foreground to background. And uh, if you make the gradient and realize it's backwards, you can either click this, which will flip it, or you can just um, you know click the option below it, but it's easier to just click this right here and I want this to actually be a radial gradient so I'm going to go ahead and click radial uh, next to the shape drop down arrow and I'm going to go ahead and click inside my composition I'm going to try to click as close to the middle as I can and I'm going to drag to about the outside of my logo and right now that color is actually backwards so I'm going to come over here and like I said just going to click this box right here come back and go ahead and just do that again okay so the next thing I'm going to do is create another layer and I'm just going to name this shape you can name it whatever you want but basically what I'm doing is this uh, kind of shape in the background here just kind of makes the overall composition have a little bit more depth so I'm going to go ahead and grab the rectangle tool, rectangle select tool, and just kind of draw it across the middle or you know, relatively close to the middle. Um, you know, you can once you draw it, you can click inside of it and drag it around. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the gradient tool again. This time I'm going to change the foreground color to white. Click OK. And I'm going to change right here, foreground to transparency. Um, that way it goes from that white to transparent color. I'm going to click on the top of this rectangle and I'm going to drag it down, not quite all the way down to the end, and release. And actually I'm going to hit Control Z because I forgot to come over to shape and change this to linear. So I'm going to come back here, do this again. Alright, then I'm going to go to select none. And that's a little bit um, too prominent, so I'm going to come over here, make sure that shape layer is selected, grab the opacity and turn it down a little bit until you think it looks good. So I'm about 37%. Um, that's just eyeing it. It's no particular number. So that looks pretty decent. I'm going to come over here, create a new layer again, name this one Vignette. Drag it to the very top because I want it to go over everything. So uh, drag that layer to the very top. Grab my composition again. Click the ellipse select tool. Go ahead and grab, uh, go up to the top left corner. Click and drag and drag it all the way down to the bottom right corner. And just try to make sure that it's uh, evenly distributed throughout the entire composition. So it's going to give you this select, uh, ellipse select. Um, which is everything inside of this ellipse is going to be colored in if you uh, decide to color it in with the bucket fill tool. But I want it to be the opposite. I want it to be everything outside of that ellipse is colored in. So I'm going to go ahead and go to select invert. Then I'm going to grab my bucket fill tool, change the foreground color to black, hit OK. Make sure my composition is selected again. I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and click on the outside of that ellipse. And that's going to fill it all with black. So now I'm going to hit select none. I'm going to come over to filter, blur, Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. And uh, I'm just going to crank it up so that this um, layer looks blurred like this. I mean the original, if I click and drag this, you can see what the original looked like. And I want it to be blurred like so. Like uh, the rendered rendered version here. So then I'm going to click OK. And now it's all blurred around the edges. Um, but I want to make this uh, gradient, or this um, vignette a little, a little bit less prominent. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, come over to my layers panel, take the opacity bar and turn it down. And uh, I'm just going to turn it down until I think it looks all right. And I think that looks pretty good there, about 30, 31%. Uh, you can crank it down a little more if you want. And um, that's pretty much it. You can add whatever text you want to this or any other designs. You know, just grab the text tool here, click, and type your text. Um, whatever you want to do. I'm just doing this as an example. I don't actually want that there. Um, the simpler, the better, in my opinion. But, you know, go nuts with it if that's what you want to do. But basically, when you're done, you can just come over here to File, Save, or Save As, and uh, change the name to whatever you want. So I'll type in uh, Twitter header Davies Media Design. Come down here to select File Type. Scroll down until you see JPEG image right here. Click Save. and. Uh, you'll get this message and just click export quality 100 unless the file size is too big and then you can decrease the quality and uh, now just go over to Twitter and change your header and select this file from your computer and that's it so once you've finished your Twitter header design you can come into your Twitter account here um, obviously you gotta log in but you can come over here to edit profile 
change your header photo so just click anywhere on your header photo go to upload photo and from your computer you can choose your file so here's my file right here go to open and uh, you can adjust the zoom um, but the way we created our file the uh, header is the right size so you don't have to change it so thanks for watching this tutorial you can subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash davies media design or if you need marketing services or graphic design services go to daviesmediadesign.com we also have some blogs now up on our website our new website um, so you can check those blogs out if you want some marketing tips on some uh, do-it-yourself marketing or you can follow us on Twitter at Davies Media DES or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Davies Media Design.